Friends, this is Rob the Sapper Gardener representing Essiant's Family Garden. And today we're just going to walk around the garden a little bit and we're going to talk about different ways to feed your plants. We have a garage full of uh, different fertilizers, worm casting, things like that. But we're also big into recycling and a ton of things that we use on a daily or weekly basis. A lot of those we can also recycle into our garden to feed our plants and we're going to talk about those real quick in today's video. So let me flip you around and get started. And we don't want this to be a knock on anyone who goes out and buys fertilizer or amendments from the big box store because you can see we have our fair share that we've bought over the years, but honestly, uh, aside from some of our citrus and nut tree fertilizer, we barely use any of this. But if you have to get this and you have to use that in your soil, um, more power to you. We're not saying not to do that, but if you have something that's already common in your household, let's uh, try to use that before we start buying unnecessarily one thing that a lot of people use in their garden are compost teas and one of the most common on our property and a lot of uh, gardeners property is cum free tea you can also use uh, common weeds like a uh, thistle stinging nettle uh, dandelions a lot of those can go into a bucket Cover them with water, soak them, and then in a few weeks, you got a very nutrient-rich tea. You add that to your gardens, and all those nutrients that it pulls up from deep in the soils become readily available to your vegetables and fruit as they break down. But in addition to making a compost tea, you can also use things like uh, Comfrey as a chop and drop method of feeding your vegetables. And we like to do that in a lot of our potted plants. We'll take the comfrey leaves, we'll cut them off, we'll drop them in our pots. We also do this around our in-ground fruit trees and berry bushes. We are very careful not to cut into the root so that we get comfrey popping up in places we don't want them. But in a lot of our potted plants, it's an easy way to feed your soil so that the soil can feed your plants. These will break down over a week or so. They'll go down into the soil and feed your plants. It also serves as a organic mulch, which is one reason we like to use it in our potted plants. It'll smother out weeds that may be popping up. And in addition to comfrey, you can also use plants such as your burdock leaves and your horseradish, lots of different broad leaf plants. You can put those down. It'll serve to mulch your soil and it'll also serve to feed the soil as it breaks down. And we obviously have a lot of it in our garden. And some of these can also go to feed your backyard animals like your hens. Plants like sunflowers, anything with a broad leaf can generally go into your soil. Unless it contains toxins that you don't want to eat and then you want to be careful like some beans yeah we do have compost piles um, we believe in cold composting which means we don't come out and turn our compost to keep it hot we just let it sit over time and break down and one of the issues with that is you can get a lot of growth as it breaks down it's nutrient rich 
uh, weeds and things like that will grow up in them. Uh, one thing that you may want to consider, depending on the size of your garden, are compost tumblers or compost bins where you can control what goes in and not have to worry as much about weed overgrowth on your compost pile. It's usually pretty easy to tear that stuff out, but because it's such a rich soil, you're going to have that if you don't keep your compost piles hot and ready. Grape leaves are another great thing you can add into your compost teas or use as an organic mulch, but they are also uh, very nutritious for eating. Uh, much like sweet potato leaves, you can take these off, cook with them, do a lot of different things with them. You can cook with the burdock leaves, but you want to try to get your burdock leaves when they're young and immature. As they get older, they get very fibrous and are not tender. So if you can catch them early, you can do that. We're growing our burdock now for the roots. So we'll let this grow a little bit more and then we'll dig it up and we'll use the roots for some uh, holistic or semi-medicinal purposes. Another good natural resource that you may potentially have on your property if you're like us, we like to cook out a lot and we like grilling over wood or on wood lump charcoal. And if you are, you can take your leftover ashes. If you're using wood or wood lump charcoal, you can also add that into your soil and that'll give it some nutrients also. If you're using charcoal bri briquettes, you may not want to add that because they do use some stabilizers um, and some binders in that and you may not want to add that chemical into your garden. Now, the rhubarb is a great plant. You can see how large these leaves are compared to my hands. My hands are not small and the rhubarb leaves dwarf it. So we'll start cutting this for the stalks during the summer. We'll cut one or two stalks off, chop those up. We'll blanch those and freeze them but the leaves are not eaten, so that's something that we can easily take, add in with our comfrey down here in our plants, along with our rice water or potato water to give them all the micronutrients that we have available. So there are lots of things that we use on a daily or weekly basis that we can take, repurpose, and then add into our soil. Uh, common things like uh, rice water. When we soak our rice before cooking it, we can soak that. We can drain the water off, add that into our pots, either here in the house or outside in our garden. You can add it into garden beds. Obviously, you won't have a lot of water at any one time, so the pots are our preferred method. You can do the same with uh, potatoes. When you boil potatoes to make mashed potatoes, drain your water off, let it cool down, add it into your pots. And all the nutrients and minerals that leach out of that during the boiling process can be used in the plants. Um, the starches help feed the, the beneficial uh, bacteria in your potting mix and that helps your plants to uptake what they need to be healthy. You can do that with a lot of other things that you uh, use that some people might consider scraps, uh, banana peels, carrots, uh, apple uh, peels, uh, oranges, uh, lots of those. Um, and you can use them a lot of different ways. You can use the boiling method to boil the peels, let it dry, drain the liquid off, pour that into your pots, take your peels, either add them into your compost or add them directly into your pots as a uh, uh, organic mulch. You can also do your 
a compost tea version, take those scraps, throw them into a bucket, let them sit for weeks until they start to break down, and then the micronutrients, the beneficial uh, uh, properties go into your liquid, and then you've got a good compost tea. Compost tea, as I said, can be comfrey, can be um, thistle, it can be dandelions, lots of different things. And another method which we don't use, but some people like to do, is to take your peels, your um, comfrey, things like that, dry those out, grind them up into a finer powder, and then sprinkle them in like you would uh, a lot of the store-bought fertilizers. So uh, in addition to rice, potatoes, vegetable peels, things like that, we also try to make sure we use anything that we consume, uh, whether we grow it on our property or whether we buy it, and that includes things like uh, peanut hulls, great natural fertilizer and amendment for your soil, uh, pistachio shells, pecan shells, almond shells, any of those that we get, we'll take, we'll either grind it up if we want it to be absorbed and amended into the soil, or we'll just put a layer on top in our pots and we'll use that as an organic mulch. And uh, it seems to work well. We still use some things that help deter um, pest insects like uh, diatomaceous earth. Um, we use, uh, I forget the name of it, I'll put a clip of it up here, but the same granules that we use to uh, prevent uh, mosquitoes out in our pots and wet areas, we also add a little bit of that into our potting mix to help deter insects, but the shells seem to help with that too. It's a hard surface that they can't dig into, of course they can crawl around it, but uh, every deterrence is a uh, help so yep yeah, just use what you have and use it to the best that you can so lots of different ways that you can use things in your garden um, we just encourage everybody to think about it before you throw something into your trash can before you throw something into your recycle bin before you throw it into your compost pile First thing, is there a way that you can add that more directly into your pots, into your soil, to feed your plants? So, real quick video on some ways that we go about doing that at our property. Every place is different. Um, if you're in an apartment, townhouse, if you've got limited yard space, there may be different ways that you do it. Let us know down below in the comments because we're always looking to find new ways to feed our plants. So, quick video. I'm going to get out, rest up after a hard day's work, and get ready to have dinner with the family. So, as always, it's Rob the Sapper Gardener representing SCI's Family Garden, saying God bless our great nation America and God bless you wherever you reside around the world. Take care. Sapper out.